Greetings and welcome to America in Focus, powered by the Center Square. I am Dan McCaleb, executive editor of the Center Square Newswire service. Joining me again today is the Center Square Washington, D.C. Bureau Chief, Casey Harper. The feud between President Joe Biden and congressional Republicans continued this week on a couple of different fronts. First, the U.S. House essentially passed legislation blocking President Biden's student loan forgiveness uh, program. And then Speaker uh, McCarthy uh, essentially said that there will be no debt ceiling limit uh, raised without spending cuts, something that Biden is opposed to. Where do you want to start on this? We can start. I'm sure that all of our, all those with student debt are, are curious about what this means. And they've been hearing about the debt ceiling for, for a little while now. So we can start with that. So House Republicans voted 218 to 203 using the Congressional Review Act, which is a, um, a provision that allows members of, or allows Congress to overturn recently enacted federal rules. So they, they voted that to do this. And what it does is two things. It cancels Biden's kind of unilateral action via the Department of Education to cancel $10,000 in federal student loan debt, more for Pell Grant recipients, up to 20 grand for Pell Grant recipients. And it also would restart repayment. So those who have, you know, sizable student loan debt know that they haven't been, you know, repaying on their debt. It's been paused. Now that was done by um, former President Donald Trump and then extended multiple times by, you know, President Biden. The pause on repaying student loan, uh, loan debt comes stems from the COVID-19 pandemic, right? Yeah. This, I mean, that was kind of the justification for it. Now, there is kind of some political gamesmanship happening there because uh, I think at some level, Biden was looking for an excuse in the same way that you could argue that Trump, Trump's Title 42 action, which kept, you know, more, it made it easier for Border Patrol to turn away illegal immigrants at the, at the border. You know, Trump said, oh, this is because of COVID. But, you know, you could say, well, he's just using COVID to stop, you know, illegal immigration. Same thing with Biden here. He's, he could be using COVID to put in a politically popular for his base um, student loan forgiveness plan. The same way he tried to do an eviction moratorium, right? But the Supreme Court said it wasn't, un- it was unconstitutional. And it's worth noting that the Supreme Court is, you know, in the coming weeks going to release a decision on this, on the Supreme Court, on this, uh, student loan forgiveness. Now, that doesn't make Congress's efforts futile because the Supreme Court could very easily rule Hey, you know, we're not going to make a decision on this. That's an option they have. They can also say what he did is partially unconstitutional. So, they, or they could just say it's totally unconstitutional for the president to unilaterally do this, which would put it back in the hands of Congress. Now, even though the House voted this, you know, of course, there's a question of its support in the Senate, but even then, it would need Biden's signature. So, I don't, as of now, this congressional effort to overturn student loan cancellation is not going to be what gets it done very likely. But it does put a lot of pressure on Democrats and they could even, um, you know, it helps some politi- Republicans politically say they did something and it could force Biden to actually veto and double down on on this student loan, kind of controversial student loan plan. Ultimately, this is in the U.S. Supreme Court's uh, hands and we could get a decision on this almost any week now, right? From the Supreme Court, I'm talking Correct. About. Correct. The Supreme Court has been issuing decisions. Uh, this is the season for that. They did take up the challenge to uh, President Biden's student loan forgiveness plan. So we'll see in the coming weeks and, and listeners can look out for that at the centersquare.com. So let's get into this briefly. Casey, don't have a ton of time. This debt limit battle between House Republicans and President Biden. Tre- uh, Treasury Secretary Janet Yellen says the U.S. could default on its debt as early as June 1st, which is um, next week if um, if Congress does not raise uh, the debt ceiling. McCarthy and congressional Republicans say, yeah, we will do that, but we need spending cuts before we agree uh, to do that. President Biden is against that, saying they're two separate things and they should be handled separately. But the debt is about government spending. So there's a good argument to say that they should be tied together. What happens next, Casey? Yeah, I mean, what happens next is somebody caves in, right? And the question is, who is more at risk politically for a default or who, who's able, who has more willingness to, um, you know, have, have, I guess, a backbone? Maybe that's not the right word. But, you know, if, if we do default, will House Republicans get blamed uh, in their own mind because they stood up? You could say that, but, you know, you could also make the argument, hey, Democrats have control of the Senate. 
and the White House, whichever party really is in charge in D.C., should take the blame, especially whoever's in the White House. And then, But I really do genuinely believe neither party wants to default because it would have really catastrophic consequences for the U.S. economy with ripple ripple effects globally. I mean, so there is a really there's a lot at stake here. I think that eventually they will get a deal done, but it's a little bit of game of chicken on both sides. And, and, and there's also you mentioned that June fest, first deadline, but it's further complicated by the fact that that June first choice is a little bit arbitrary. Um, it's almost impossible for bureaucrats to determine the exact moment or day when we will run out of money and be unable to pay our creditors. So it could be June second. It could be June third, and you know, it and the Treasury Department has admitted as much that as early as June first, but potentially a couple week, you know, a few weeks after that. So how do you play a game of chicken with billions of dollars on the line, the credit of the U.S., and you don't even have an exact moment where that's such a hard deadline that it's pretty pretty interesting to watch with sadly pretty high stakes. With Memorial Day weekend coming up, I, I don't know if there are any, I'm sure the two sides are keeping in touch with each other. I don't know if there's any serious face-to-face talks planned through this weekend, but it's going to be June 1st before you know it. As you said, that still is, that is an arbitrary quote-unquote deadline. Um, who knows? But it is a standoff that can, still continues as the uh, days uh, tick by. Yeah, that's right. And um, we'll we'll see. I think this is, you know, McCarthy has had, I will probably wrap up with this, I guess. But, you know, McCarthy has been put to the test a couple of times. You may remember that he was just barely elected to lead the House, but he's had some wins. He's taken on this uh, student loan stuff. He passed their own his own version of uh, a debt ceiling hike that significantly cut federal spending a few weeks ago and put the ball in Biden's court. So how he handles this has big implications for him and, and who's going to lead the Republican Party as well. Well, we will close on that, Casey, because we are out of time. Listeners can keep up with this story and more at thecentersquare.com. For Casey Harper, I'm Dan McCaleb. Please subscribe and thank you for listening. 